After another disappointing loss in the Manchester Derby, should Eric Ten Hag be sacked as the Manchester United manager? Because let's look at some stats. We were dominated in possession, in shots. We barely had any attacking threat throughout the whole match. Not only that, our XG was awful. And City deservedly won the match. Not only that, we have 11 losses overall in this season in Premier League alone. Across all competitions, we are sitting at 16 losses and it's just February. We are 6 in the league. We have a negative 2 goal difference. So with these stats, which is printed all over any media, should Eric Ten Hag be sacked? The answer is simply no. Right now, there's a huge agenda against Ten Hag and it's been running whole, this whole season. What people are forgetting is the context of this season. We are in between the most injury-hit season Manchester United has had in recent years. We are playing without a striker. We are playing without a limp back. Two of our important centre-backs are injured as well, Martinez and Maguire. And yet, people are expecting Eric Ten Hag to play expansive, possessive football against one of the best teams in the world. Even our injury hit our team is right now. We were always going to play a defensive match. Always. That's what happened at Liverpool as well. The only difference between Liverpool and this game is our attack didn't do anything. After the Rashford goal, we were hanging on in this game because of our defensive masterclass. Onana probably had his best game in a United shirt. Varan, Evans, Dallo all had great games. Even Casemiro and Menu did their part in defence. But as soon as the ball got to our forwards, the team was lost. They couldn't pass four passes together. They couldn't keep position. They couldn't even keep the ball up to help relieve some pressure. That's why we lost. It's so bad that we only scored two, go- two shots, two or three shots against City. And no-, and no other team has had fewer shots against City this season. Even Everton who did a similar game plan of sitting deep and hitting on the counter, even they had better chances than United. That's how bad our for- forwards were. But, of course, the media won't acknowledge that. The media will just point at Eric Ten Hag. You tell me, if our players can't even do the basics, if they can't do four passes, if they can't just keep hold of the ball, then what is Ten Hag supposed to do? One option is to substitute them. But look at a bench. Do you see anyone on this bench who is capable of coming on to the pitch and changing the game? No one. We were literally playing our weakest team in this game against City's strongest team. And yet people are being in an outrage that Ten Hag needs to be sacked because our stats look bad. That was always going to happen. What I'm really annoyed about is, is that people are pretending that Ten Hag is a really bad manager. If he was really that bad, we wouldn't have finished third last season. We wouldn't have won the Carabao. Players and managers don't change from one season to the next. It's a similar situation with Ronaldo. Ronaldo scored 18 goals in the Prem uh, when he came back. And next season, people are pretending like he's finished. Same again this season. Ten Hag overperformed last season with these players. And now, when we don't even have those players available. People are pretending like he doesn't know what he's doing. That's not true. The problem at United runs much deeper than the manager. Because let me give you an example. In this match, Rashford scored a world here, right? Really good shot. No one was expecting it to go in, but it went in. But as soon as that goal went in, Rashford had two other easy chances. One, when he was ahead of Fokker by two or three yards. All he needed to do was head the ball forward to, so that he can run onto it. But what he did is he headed it downwards onto his path and then just me- messed it up. That was one chance. The other chance from Bruno's cross, he's three, he's right in front of the goal and he missed the shot completely. So, you tell me. A player who is missing those two big chances, does anyone else miss them from the top six? Anyone else? If he scores one of those two other goals, I think we would have probably gotten a result out of this game. But he missed those. Then, Onana had his best game. He had to save a 1v1 against Foden. He had to save that Rodri shot. Even Haaland missed it. So, it's just about chances. Rashford missed his other chances and City didn't and they won. That's all. 
if Rashford had scored those chances, it would have been a completely different story. I'm really not trying to say that United should have won or anything. We deserve to lose. We were the worst team. But people are forgetting the fact about what Ten Hag is working with. Most injuries out. Most of his signings are not available. We don't have a striker. We don't have a left back. We don't have good uh, centre backs available as you know substitutes. Not only that, Rashford is missing basic chances. Our team cannot string passes in the midfield. We cannot hold the position. Not only that, both Rashford and Evans were carrying injuries, and he and they had to be substituted off. So not only do we have a weak squad, we have a weak starting eleven, and even in that, we are playing with two players with injuries. And yet people are t- pretending like it's all Ten Hag's fault. Like it's just so stupid how much agenda there is in the media right now. It's not only big YouTubers. You you can look at any big media outlet, whether it's on Twitter, it's on YouTube, or it's on you know traditional media like Sky or whatever. They all have an agenda right now that El Ten Hag is the worst manager and he needs to be sad. But what I want to ask is. Let's say we get Nagelsmann right now. He can't even join anyways because of Germany. Let's say we get Dezobi. Do you really think he, he, they can get us top four? Obviously not. Nobody can get top four with this United team. The other thing people ask is, it's Ten Hag's fault that squad is like this. How? Let's take a look at some of Ten Hag's signing, right? Martinez worked. Casimiro worked. Onana may or may not work, but he was really good in this game at least. Holland has worked. Right? Now let's look at some of the bad decisions. Mount, injured. It's not in Ten Hag's control. Malasia was pretty good last season as his debut season. But again, injured and El Ten Hag can't control it. After that, we have Amrabat who played well in the last game against Forest, But in this game, he just shit himself some reason and gifted a goal. Then Regulon, again alone, which the board decided to send him back. Not Ten Hag. The board decided it was a good idea to save a few pounds and send Regulon back. Ten Hag wanted to keep him. Right? Next, Sabitzer, an- another loan. Vegost, another loan. Evans, who was bought in because he couldn't afford to buy anyone else. Anthony, who I agree, is probably one of the worst signings we have made. Right? But now look at it. How many of Ten Hag's signings is currently playing? How many? Just on just Onana. Everyone else is either from be- before his time or from the academy. Casemiro, uh, another one which he signed, which has worked. So I don't get this agenda that Ten Hag's fault of his squad and that Ten Hag's signed ID is bad. Tell me one manager who has a 100% accurate talent ID. Whether it's Klopp, whether it's Guardiola, whether it's anyone you want to name. No one has a perfect talent ID. And they like to bring up the fact that Ten Hag has spent a lot of money. 400 million, 500 million. You tell me, is Ten Hag sitting at the board negotiating the contracts of how much money to pay? No. Ten Hag told them what he wanted. Let me give you the best example, Anthony. Ten Hag wanted Anthony since May. Right? And I remember the Glazers and John Murda stalling the deal until it got to August. Right? Even then, it was like the last few weeks of August, right? And only in that time did Manchester United decide to pay the money for Anthony. Anthony was available for 40-50 million. But because Murta decided to stall, his price went up from 50 to 100. So how is that an Hag's fault that our club didn't negotiate at a good price early on? It's the same with other players like Mount. Mount, at 55 million, I think he's fine. The price tag. But the problem is he hasn't been available to play. So it's just, just so stupid the kind of blind agenda people are running. Without any brain that the squad is Ten Hag's problem, the injuries are Ten Hag's problem, the style of play is Ten Hag's problem. How much can he control with this shit squad? You tell me. Another example is Pochettino, right? Pochettino spent way more than us. 
and he probably has a way better playing 11 than us currently and yet he keeps losing he lost to liverpool's b or c team in the carabao cup final but there is not that much pressure on him why it's all on ten hag if ten hag was really such a bad manager then why does he have one of the best win percentages after 100 games as a united manager in united's history there's i think there's only jose mourinho who has a better win, uh, win percentage than eric ten hag and that's marginally better and most of these defeats for eric ten hag has come in this abnormal season of injury hit just imagine if he didn't have these injuries if he had martinez shaw hoyland you know martial etc etc since the start he would have been the best starting manager after 100 games but no people don't want to talk about this because everyone is trying to run an agenda for picks i would love to know your comments on this i would i'm ready to debate every single person on why they want to sack eric ten hag and what they want to do after sacking him i'm ready to debate anyone who wants to talk about it because even i want to know like what are you thinking like why do you want ten hag out and what are you expecting to change after ten hag goes out even if we sack ten hag even if we get a new manager there needs to be a rebuild in the summer so why not why not just give ten hag a chance he will perform with the squad last season if you give ten hag a good squad with a good structure up above him i believe he can do as good as any manager at united even if you bring anyone new ten hag can do better or probably the same if you like my video so far then i would really appreciate if you can click on the subscribe button below i would love to have you in my community another thing people are blaming on ten hag for this match is his substitutions right that why did you sub off rashford why did you sub off evans and bring on amrabat and anthony so first of all they both are carrying in injuries second of all rashford aside of scoring that goal didn't do anything he missed two chances he was pocketed by walker he couldn't hold the ball up he couldn't dribble the ball so it was obvious to sub him off yes ten hag could have brought on amad right but people are trying to pretend that amad is the second coming of messi that if you bring on amad he would score a goal and win us the game we don't know that yes amad performed really good in the champions uh, in the championship with sunderland but that's sunderland yes he deserves more of a chance than anthony but let's not pretend that amad alone could have won won us the game as for amrabat amrabat played really well in last game right and he was only brought in the last 5 minutes who could have predicted he would shit himself and give haaland a goal no one and even if he doesn't bring on amrabat look at this bench who else do you see there who can do anything on the pitch no one that's such a weak bench we don't even have good midfield substitutions available because everyone is injured Eriksen doesn't work in big games because he doesn't have the legs for it. So of course he would have been just as useless. Not only this was the problem, my biggest problem was the referees, right? Two incidents. First, Rashford is running full on speed. He is ahead of Walker and Walker pulls him back. Grabs on his shoulder and pulls him back. The referee says no foul. That's corruption in my opinion. The DS run in 15 charges, give them another one. if a player as fast as rashford is running at full speed and remember he is he is through on goal right there's no other defender who can catch up to him outside of walker and walker pulls him back at full speed at that high of a speed if someone pulls you back your balance will go off and that would have been a foul i'm not saying it's a red card or anything but that's a foul any any day but the free doesn't give a foul the play continues and foden goes and scores that should have been that should have been a foul and that shouldn't have been a goal and the second thing the it is in tackle on ganacho i'm not saying that's a foul right i'm that's a clean tackle in my books the problem is this same tackle gets given a red card anywhere else on the field because it's reckless but because it's it isn't it doesn't uh, get given even as a foul because it's really fast it's really reckless and it's studs up 
and he catches Ganacho really bad as well after that. So that's a reckless tactic. Now I just want to see that if a similar tackle ever happens again in the season, then that shouldn't be given as a foul ever again, right? Because this is not a foul, according to the according to the referee. I just feel that somewhere along the line, City always gets the decision in their favor. When we, we when City was playing against us at Old Trafford, Hoyland only slightly grabbed Rodri, right? And he was given a penalty. That grabbing thing has never been given a foul ever again, even though it happens every match. So it was given only in that single match and not ever again. Similar to this Edison tackle. This tackle has been given a red card even to Casemiro, even to uh, Gusto at Chelsea. But no, because it's Edison, he it doesn't get that card for being reckless. So I just don't like this consistency. Felipe last week grabs hold on to Bruno, doesn't get a red card. Casemiro does it, gets a red card. This Felipe thing is so bad that no one's talking about it in the media anymore. Not a single person. But if Bruno did this to a uh, forest play, you would have still been hearing about it. So I'm just tired of this referee drama that somewhere along the line they have decided that it's every decision that should go against United will go against United. Same for Ten Hag. Everything which can go wrong for him this season, it will go wrong for him. Whether it's his signings being out, whether it's players not performing, whether it's the referee is not being not doing their job. I'm not saying Ten Hag is the best manager and, and that Ten Hag is the right answer, but I at least want him to be given a fair chance. This season shouldn't be used to judge him when he doesn't even have his players. No other manager has had such problems. Even if you look at Klopp, Arteta or previous standard managers, no one has had a worse squad. Playing without a striker for most of the season, playing without a left back, Playing without your main centre backs, playing without your main midfield. So it's just crazy that people are still being ten hours out and ignoring all these facts. These are not excuses, these are facts. Let's just talk about the future, what goals for United and Ten Hag. We are eleven points off the top four with eleven games to go. I think the top four is done. Top four is no longer in our hands. The only chance United has for winning the top four is if Aston Villa and Spurs mess up. Because United have games against Liverpool at home, Aston Villa at home. We have a game against Chelsea, we have a game against Newcastle, we have a game against Brighton. So there are lots of games where we will probably lose and drop more points. The only chance we have at finishing in the Champions League is if Aston Villa and Spurs bottle it. And in the game, they have to play against each other. They draw. So it's no longer in our hands. We need to depend on them dropping points for us to finish in the top four. Because the loss against Fulham, that was the actual reason why we probably won't finish in the top four. Not this City game. This, is, this City game was always something we, we were going to lose. And it's just crazy to me that people are pretending online that they expected anything else. That United should be better. That United is this. United has been shit for the last 10 years and City has been at their peak for the last 10 years. I don't know why this, these headlines still going that United should be better that there's this huge divide. Of course there is. We had glazers with us who don't care about the club at all. They say we have spent a billion pounds. Those billion pounds are not by the owners. They are what the club has earned. Our owners hasn't put a single pound in. They they have never cared. City have owners who cared. City have owners who have smart people at the right places. That's the difference. So that's why I want to give Tenar the chance with with Sergio. That once he has a good squad, once he has a right structure above, above him, can he do a better job? If he can't, then sure, fire him. But not now. Not with this. Not with these much problems. This is the same season where Sancho has refused to play, where Anthony had cases against him, where he had to deal with it with the Greenwood scenario, where he had to deal with the places selling the club and no funds being available. 
this is the same season where in January with the injury hit season, we never had a uh, incoming. We even let players go such as Donny, Beckelon, Al- Alvaro Fernandez. So how can you judge him on this season when everything is going wrong? It's just crazy to me and so frustrating to see people having this agenda just to get clicks. And next game is against Everton next week. And after that, we have Liverpool at FA Cup, which, you know, once again, I'm not expecting anything. Because by that time, I think Darwin Nunes and Salah and a few of their injured players come back. So we'll probably go against a really strong Liverpool team against still our injury driven team. So I'm hoping for a miracle for us to win. But once again, I'm not expecting anything. After that, it's an international break. By which point, I'm being told that both Hoyland and Mount should have returned, which should boost some hope for the season. So yeah, if you want to relive the Nottingham Forest game where we barely went through to the next round of the FA Cup, then you can click on this link right here. I would love to know your thoughts and comments about Ten Hag and the club in the comments on. So let me know what you think. I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.